Hey everybody, um, I just realized I forgot to put my microphone in. Um, this is Beth Bond. Welcome to Full of Useless Information. And um, For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Beth Bond. I work with Southeast Green. I actually am the curator of Sustainable News at Southeast Green, which basically is a fancy term for chief bottle washer and uh, everything in between. So. I haven't been on Periscope for a while. Um, there's a couple things that happened. One is um, I was traveling and I got home and there's fall here in Atlanta for uh, sustainability stuff is insane. And so I've been to a bunch of events and I've been tweeting and I've been trying to get everything up from Expo East. And so I haven't been um, on Periscope. And then I think something really interesting happened. The Periscope uh, Summit happened and everyone I've been watching on Periscope went up to New York and they sort of stopped scoping, so I it just it just became sort of a rust period for me. But um, people have been asking if I'm going to have some type of planned uh, series for this. And although I have a plan in my mind for what I'm going to talk about, I do not have a plan in regards to broadcasting. I do have um, or I have had a weekly radio show, and we're sort of on hiatus. But that I did every single week at the same time, and I think that's probably going to be helpful. Um, but the other thing that I really want to talk about on Periscope that we will not be talking about in this Periscope, but I think I'm going to just do two Periscopes tonight, is uh, sustainability and social media. So um, Southeast Green is the largest online news site for sustainable business and environmental policy news in the Southeast, and we cover 13 states. And one of the ways that I've leveraged getting um, traffic on Southeast Green is to actually use an abundant amount of social media. And so I know that there are people who um, follow me on Southeast Green who would like to get some of those tips and, um, and hints on that. And so what I've decided to do is they will be available on the uh, YouTube channel um, for Southeast Green, but I'm also going to put them under um, our About Us section on Southeast Green because they're sort of about sustainability, but they're really more about tactical um, things to be thinking about when you're doing social media. And there are a lot of great people, a lot of great people on uh, social media, talking about social media on Periscope, but I really believe that there is a particular way to do social media. Um, and if you're talking environment or sustainability, and I feel like um, I have not perfected, but I have honed a lot of those skills and would like to share those with folks. So um, we'll probably see another uh, video tonight, I mean, sorry, another scope tonight about social media and sustainability. So the, the tonight's topic, thank you for getting me on point, is water, now that I've done sort of my introduction. And thank you so much for everyone who's joined us. Um, I'm not very comfortable asking for hearts, but if you, if you like the thought of us discussing water and water conservation, you can certainly throw some hearts. Um, we have been, I've been doing a series of sustainability. We've done solar, we've done energy efficiency, we've done some movie reviews. And tonight what we're going to be doing is talking about water. Now, we have just experienced seven days of rain here in Atlanta. So for those of us, uh, those of y'all in the Atlanta market, you might be saying, why in the world are we talking about water? But for friends because uh, out, out in California, um, oh, did you see Cowspiracy? I have not seen it. I've heard lots of great things. I'm in the process of planning a conference, and we're sort of debating whether we're going to show Cowspiracy um, at the conference. What do you think? Should we, should we do that? Um, and thanks to everyone who's joined. If you want to tell me where you're joining from, that would be awesome. Um, we're in Atlanta. Once, well, Decatur, which is a, a little town right and sort of swallowed up by Metro Atlanta. So Cowspiracy is a uh, video that um, it's a, a documentary on the meat industry here in the United States. So um, I definitely need to do it. I say, they're saying it's available on Netflix. And I have done several film reviews in my series of what I call this series full of useless information. And I've had a lot of professionals say, you shouldn't say that, but you have to know my sense of humor to know why. I call it full of useless information. But um, anyway, so thank you for that. Shout out for Cowspiracy, and I'll make sure I check it out. There, um, I've done three movie reviews now on full of useless information. The, you can go check them out under um, southeastgreen.com forward slash full of useless information, or you can just follow the links. I need to put a banner ad up on the site so it's easy for people to find. So all of my scopes are free, and we save them to the YouTube channel, and we turn around and save them to, um, to Southeast Green. So they're there. So back to water. All right. 
So anyway, water is, is going to be an issue. Water, the James Bond film from a couple of years ago talking about scarcity of water, that, that's what the world's going to look like because we have basically taken water for granted, right? We, we use it. We don't want to pay for it. We, you know, we dump all our pollution into it. Um, I'm not going to talk about the plastic gyros. There's five of them they've actually discovered. We always hear about the one in, in the Pacific Ocean, but there's one in the Atlantic. There's one in the Indian Ocean. There's one in the Arctic Ocean. Our, you know, we're just, we as a, as a world society have become very wasteful and we need to be more, um, no, it doesn't e exit the hemisphere, but it does shift to where po populations are. So the Sahara Desert, for instance, if you didn't know, used to be an ocean. I was very honored to serve in the Peace Corps in Niger, which is north of Nigeria. And the Sahara Ocean, the Sahara Desert used to be the Sahara Ocean. And so it shifts. And the, as we mismanage the use of water, we create our own man-made water shortages. And that is, um, Atlanta is one of the perfect examples of this because we had the smallest water sort of natural resources of any major city, and yet we continue to grow. And so we are constantly at war and at battle about where is water going, and we do some really crazy things. People are going to look back at Atlanta 100 years from now and say, what? Because if you think about it, water is the heaviest thing, right? It's the most dense thing. That is, um, and we are doing things like we are moving water from one lake to another lake, um, and it's very energy um, inefficient. It's it puts other um, it puts you know one lake at risk for the other lake, and so the the movement of water is actually a very serious issue. Um, Charles Fish I think Fishburn has ri uh, written a book about it, and you might want to check that out. Um, you can I'll, I'll include the link underneath um, the YouTube video so you can check it out. But water management is really critical. But there's a lot of things, and this is one of the things that we focus here on full of useless information, we as individuals can do to help the water. So the first thing you think about is, is how much treated water do I need to do sort of outdoor activities in my yard? For instance, if you're watering plants or you're watering your... Um, yeah, but I mean, think about it. We are close to desalinization of water. Um, but the process is still insanely expensive. And for those of us who do not live near um, the ocean, then we've got problems. And then the other thing is, is where do you locate your desalinization plant? Because like if you're in Florida where they're already experiencing sea level rise, where do you put the plant where it's close enough to take the water, but it's not going to be affected by the sea level rise? So desalinization is a solution, but the best solution to anything in conservation, whether it's water, energy, um, land is to actually limit or reduce the amount of water we use to begin with. And that's one of the things that I've been really interested in talking about on these scopes is, you know, there's things that we do that we don't think about. And if we just sort of change the way we think about it, um, then we will um, help the situation. So, um, so here's some water conservation tips to do around the house. Do get a rain barrel. I have one. I have not installed it, so don't practice. I'm not practicing what I preach, but especially if you're into gardening, a rain barrel can really, really help. And think about this. When you bring water out of your faucet or your hose, you are bringing treated municipal water, unless you live out in the country and you've got your own well. But you are bringing treated municipal water, which means it's had chemicals and, and things like that to treat it. Um, that way, if you're collecting your own rainwater, then your water is actually cleaner than the water you're bringing out of your faucet for your plants because it doesn't have all the chemicals that's been treated in, in the chemical thing, uh, in, in the wastewater treatment plants. The second thing is to think about water health. I guess this is going to be a little bit beyond conservation. Do not, please do not flush your uh, uh, prescriptions down the toilet. Um, and a wastewater treatment plant, they will treat for the typical sewage that we think about and they'll skim things off. I've, I guess I've had the dubious honor of visiting one of those places. It's definitely not a place I would recommend. But do not flush your prescriptions. The water that gets treated in your local municipal system does not get treated for your medications. 
And so what you really need to be doing with your medications, and it's about to come up, so I guess this is timely, is uh, police departments across the country in October will be having uh, prescription turn-in dates. So take your prescription drugs there to your local police department. And they actually, that, that used to be the prescribed. This is, this is how old I am. The prescribed method when I was growing up as a child was to flush your, flush your, uh, your medications. So children wouldn't take them. Um, and now what you need to be doing is putting them in a place where your kids can't get to them and then giving them to the police department. And they will, um, they will dispose of them and they will go into lined um, landfills that cannot leak into the ground and cannot leak into our water. But if you've ever been to a drugstore and visited and seen all the prescriptions and think about how many people don't finish taking their prescriptions and if they flush them down the toilet or they flush them um, you know, in the garbage disposal. Think about what would happen to water. Think about the fish and think about all the other little aquatic animals. Um, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what OTC is. That would be affected by these, um, the mass amount of, of waste we have from the prescriptions. So, um, you know, think about all the psychotic drugs over the counter. Yeah, I would say over the counter too, just because we don't, you know, we know what's in them, but we don't, there's been no studies of over-the-counter drugs and what's happening in the water. So um, I'm going to have to rename the scope, I think, because I've ended up talking a lot about the, the impact of medications in the water system. So, but I just, I, I, this is really, really important. And so anything that's over-the-counter or prescription, I would, would take to the police department, and they're going to make sure it's taken care of and disposed of in a safe way. So, um so that's another way to think about your water. So rain barrels is, is one way. Um, you can save a lot of money and you actually are, you are actually saving your city money by using rain harvesting because they don't have to treat water to get to your house for you to run out so it runs back into the systems so they have to retreat it. So rain barrels is number one. Number two is of course um, being thoughtful and mindful about how you're disposing of your prescriptions. Number three is is get um, low, fo low flow um, shower heads and faucets and make sure um, the, the amount of water if you think about a normal uh, fixture it just I think it's like five gallons a minute. We don't need five gallons a minute coming out of the faucet. Um, to to wash your hands and you know the other the sort of I always like the homemade cheap op, cheap options which is don't turn the faucet all the way on let it you know let it be a trickle um, but um, get but there are now faucets that um, aerate the water so you still feel like you've got that flow but you're not using as much water um, yes I have tried low flow and actually the ones I've had it are not horrible I also in DeKalb County where I live they had a um, rebate for low flush toilets. And so I got $100 back from my county to go with a low flush toilet and um, have had no issues whatsoever with it. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of great, um, great folks who are making great low flush toilets now. Um, Toto, which is here based in Atlanta, American, American, I think it's American Toilet, or maybe, Amer sorry, American Standard. Um, there's a couple of European companies companies. Mine's an Australian uh, low flow toilet. And so um, really do that because we don't need 25 gallons of water to do a flush. Um, the government has stepped in. Um, they, like I said, DeKalb County and in, in, in my county to sell your house, you have to have low flow toilets. So um, I was an early adopter. Not that I plan on selling my house anytime soon. But my water bill um, was reduced by 30% when I used, and I'm single, so it's not a family thing, although you would think it would be exponentially greater with, um, you know, family. But if you put the loaf, I, my, my bill reduced by 30% because, you know, I wasn't using 25 gallons. I think, I think it's a 1.5 liter. Uh, um, yeah, living in apartments is, is a bit of a challenge because you are at, you are left to the, um, the apartment building to do the work. And so, uh, you know, what I say for those who don't own where they live um, is at least make the suggestions and you can be, um, ho hold on one second, to make the suggestions that they start looking at this. And, and, and you know, if Atlanta, if DeKalb County has toilet re rebates, um, you may not get them from my home state in Alabama, but you can 
be guaranteed that there are all kinds of incentives out on the West Coast now. So if you're watching from the West Coast, check with your local county or uh, city government to see what kind of uh, rebates might be in place to do some of these retrofits. Atlanta for a while, I mean, Atlanta had a water crisis in the mid 2000s, and for a while they were giving away free shower heads. I mean, that's how big a deal it is. So, um, in regards to um, apartment complex, be that person. There was another question, and I've forgotten. I'm sorry. If you want to pop that question back up again, then then I'll answer it. So, um, so. To recap, we've talked about medications, we've talked about rain barrels, we've talked about using low flow um, appliances, and by the way, the low flow faucets and shower heads, um, high, thank you, um, are very, very inexpensive, normally under $10. Okay, so schools and high powered flushes, yes, they do have those, but they also have, there's also a whole complete uh, line of commercial. Um, toilets. One of the challenges with the schools is, is the schools didn't have, they don't have the tanks, right? They have the, they had the bowls in this high powered flush, but even that uses too much water. And so you, there are systems to go in and retrofit, but you know, it's schools and it's like, you're going to spend the money on the kids and the teachers, or are you going to spend the money on the toilets? So that's one of the things that they have to take in consideration. There are, once again, there's, you know, incentive to look at these kinds of things because um, schools are probably one of the largest uh, users of water um, when it comes to a, a county administration. So, um, and let me just tell you one more thing because um, I uh, am a person of faith and I serve on Georgia Interfaith Power and Light. And one of the other places we don't think about is churches. But um, if you attend a church or a mosque or a temple and you think about after your services and um, are what I call seasons, this is a borrow, but seasoned grits, right? Girls raised in the South seasoned, AKA grandmas, you know, there's always a line, it seems to be. And so what I encourage is churches and especially um, large churches is for them to replace their toilets that are near the sanctuary in the fellowship hall, which is where the, the major traffic happens on Sunday. Don't replace the toilet up on the third floor. Um, next to the Sunday school room class, you know, that's not going to be really highly trafficked. But normally the, the, the restrooms around the sanctuaries and the fellowship halls are also very close to the office. So, you know, the church staff are there all week. They're using the restrooms. Then you've got the sanctuary on Sunday and fellowship hall. And, you know, if you have Wednesday night or whatever going on, target, do a water audit um, and, and target which restrooms are using the most water so you can go in and pick which ones you're going to uh, replace. So it makes it makes so much sense to do that, and it also once again saves your church money. And uh, Gipple, um, oh, okay, that's a great one. Let's hope I don't. So really quickly, if you are in Georgia and would like an energy slash water audit, go to uh, Gipple.org, G-I-P-L.org. Um, and, in the, I just got a great question about the pricing of water. We, um, so for those of us who are joining and haven't been with me the whole time, my name is Beth Bond. I'm with Southeast Green and we are basically curators of sustainable business news and environmental policy news in the Southeast. We've just put up a really great post, uh, for one of our friends down in Orlando, about the price of water, and he's talking. He he does rain barrels. He does large rain barrels. He used to be in Atlanta. He did the rain barrel system for the Atlanta Braves stadium, which of course now is moving. So I hope that they're going to be doing it. But they um, he did a great article on the site, and when I post this on YouTube and on Southeast Green, I'll make sure I create a link. But we we've got water priced all wrong. I mean, that's one of the challenges we have with with the way we live, especially here in the states, is we are used to thinking that we have dominion over nature and that everything is here for us and that we should be using it for free. And so um, I love to talk about what we did in my county because during the drought, um, and besides we have a very old sewer system in my county also, during the drought, you know, people weren't being very, you know, people are still watering their yards and, you know, they're doing all crazy things and, and they weren't being serious about monitoring how much water they use. So we came up with a three-tiered system. And so basically the the system is, is, you know, if you're a water hog, you paid a higher rate per gallon used versus um, someone in the medium level and then those for us who are on the low level. 
I did have some pushback on this because someone said, well, that's not fair because if you have a family, you can't lower. My argument is, you're right, it's not fair if you have a family versus a single person. A single person is always going to consume less. However, it's not fair for the single person to pay for your water hog ways either. So the three-tiered system seems fair. And the thing about the three-tiered system is, is it doesn't mean that you can't improve. So let's say your current your current situation, whether you have a family or you're single and you're in that top tiered, you know, you're paying the highest you're you're paying the highest price for using the most resources. You know, and remember when you're talking about a water resource, it's not just water. You're paying for you know um, the water to get to the house. That's infrastructure, and those things are costly. And we as Americans have been sort of asleep at the wheel of paying for infrastructure. So um, coming in with a tiered program, and that tiered program, if you're using too much water and you don't like how much you're paying, then, hey, it's easy. Change your toilets. Change your, your water habits. You know, go for, um, one of the things we haven't mentioned yet, and I'm sorry, is WaterSense, which is the national equivalent of the EPA's um, Energy, Energy Star program. So if, look for, if you're, when you're buying water, um, uh, look, I mean, when you're buying water appliances, uh, dishwashers, water uh, dryer, um, washing machines, look for water scents, even on toilets. My toilet has been listed as a uh, uh, as a um, water sense, and that means it's been rated for conserving water. And um, so that's a great way to um, look for your products to make sure you're not using as much using so much water because we just we just sort of I don't think we're guilty I just think we we just said we're gonna solve this problem and we didn't think about the resources and I think that we now live in a, in a time and a time moving forward we have to think about our resources all the time all the time and so you know we don't have to have 25 gallons to flush a toilet you know 1.5 liters will, will work and 25 gallons is probably a little high but it is I think it's five gallons so 25 okay southern you know a little hyperbole um, I saw something about um, uh, a, a couple of y'all talking if you want to float that back up clearly I'm not used to having people on my periscope and reading all the comments so I really enjoy having the comments and the questions I think I do better answering questions anyway um, water bottles, I did see something about that. That is not um, necessarily a water issue per se. I mean, I, to me, the water bottle issue is more of a recycling plastic. Um, should you buy filters on sinks or just buy the bottle? Ah, okay. So the, he, I, I am a big proponent of, of buying filters, and here's why. Um, one, the plastic use, you know, the amount of plastic bottle. And we're doing better. I, and I, I want to reward and lift and honor that we're doing better. But if you think about it, transporting water is the heaviest thing we can do. It's the heaviest thing we, we, we transport. And we spend millions and millions of dollars. So my answer is instead of having a water bottle that's been, and I'm not saying that all water bottles are bad or that we should ban water bottles. Um, what I'm saying is, is we need to be more thoughtful. Like I'm very excited when I've drank all my water in my water bottle and um, I can get bottled water at a gas station on a road trip instead of, um, instead of you know, a, a less healthier option. But I'm gonna tell you, I am that obnoxious person. If I stop at a gas station on a road trip, I actually go in and take my water bottle in and just get free ice and they normally have a free water tab and and so not only am I saving myself the money I'm also saving myself the transport cost but back into the filter situation so um, seven billion people consuming resources versus uh, yes agreed um, now tell me what you think um, the right idea China because China is you know normally pointed to as uh, a perpetrator for not protecting our resources and they have so tell me, tell me what China is doing right. So um, anyway, so a filter is always a better option because what you want to do is you want to, uh, well, actually, okay, control population. Um, I am not going to address that tonight, but I would love to have that debate with you. Why don't you hit me up on Twitter, Beth S.E. Green, and we'll plan a scope on that because um, being a return Peace Corps volunteer, I have, I have an opinion about that. So um, I'd love to talk about that. Um, but anyway, so back to the the water filter is the way to go. Bottled water is the way to go. 
we should we should we should pay as little as possible to transport liquid. And so, um, you know, I it, I always talk about that there's unintended benefits about doing things in sustainability. And in normal society, it's always about unintended consequences. And bottled water became an unintended consequence where, hey, we're doing the right thing. We're drinking water. Yay. Oh, wait, we've created this plastic deluge of, I mean, just mountains, mountains of plastic because, you know, water goes down faster. And so I don't have, here's, here's um, a cute one that I got at Expo East. This is um, a plastic one, but my go-to choice, I don't have handy, I thought I had it right here, but I don't, is my Clean Canteen. Um, I, I call it my, my baby water bottle, and it basically goes everywhere, and I cannot tell you how many times I've forgotten it and left it and had panic attack, and yet after three years, they are not inexpensive. They're, mine was $40 or 16 ounces, but it is insulated. It does not sweat, which is really, really nice. Um... Oh, that's a great idea to try an, an ice mug on a road trip. Yeah, it's 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 great. Um, and I figure I'm buying gas from you anyway, so you know why not let me have free water? I mean, they probably have a water fountain there anyway. Uh, but I'm con I, I'm an ice person. So um, anyway, so the clean canteen highly recommend. I've got a link to it on the site um, at the top of the page. It is what I call the best water bottle ever because. You can leave ice in it, and as long as the cap is on it, it, the ice will keep all night. That's how good the insulation is. And, you know, considering that I've had it over three years now and I drink from it every single day, um, probably best investment ever. And very, very seldom do I use, um, drink plastic water. And, of course, the other thing about plastic uh, water bottles to think about is, is where it's been sitting. Is it, you know, BPA, BPS, you know, BP-free plastic? You know, what kind of toxins have been leaking in it. There's all kinds of studies that heating up the plastic leaches stuff into whatever the drink is. So, um, you know, that's another reason to get an aluminum water bottle that's recyclable. And you'll be so proud of yourself because think about all the plastic bottles you'll save. Um, so anyway, I've rambled a bit tonight, but I hope that we've covered um, a lot of great um, suggestions and ideas. If y'all have any ideas about what you think we can do to save, oh, there's another one. Some of these are, are old, so I'm not sort of saying them because I sort of think people do them. You know, turn off the turn off the water while you brush your teeth. Turn off the water while you shave your beard. You know, for men. Um, and um, so those are some some quick easy things that you know we just sort of did that we didn't think about. Um, turn off the water while you're lathering up, you know, in fact, don't, you know, um, uh, you know, turn, I actually lather up first, turn on the water, rinse my hands, rinse the knob, and then turn off. So I just, I use less water. And um, I think that you'll find that as you do these, these, these tips that it's actually, um, your life will not be, yes, southeastgreen.com is my website. And Oh, you can get lost. We've got about 14,000 pages of content. Um, I've been very honored and blessed to find my calling, which is sharing information about how to take care of our beautiful little green planet. Um, so anyway, thanks to everyone who joined. Thank you so much for all the communication. For those of you who have made it all the way through in a replay, or I didn't thank you at the beginning, I apologize. Um, but thank you so much for the replays. And um, if y'all want to share this, I would love it. Um, but like I said, it will also be up on the site within 24 hours, so um, you can share it that way too. But, you know, the whole thing about Periscope is, is share the love. So thanks so much, and we'll look forward to the next 